Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. So, a weird setup, right? Um, again, unfortunately, we had some changes of, of, of some plan changes here in the in my personal life, and uh, I'm not able to be in the studio. Uh, one of the reasons why I've been like traveling so much it's because uh, my grandma is really sick and she's been getting sicker and sicker every day so today she gave us like a really really big scare and uh, pretty much like all the family we travel she lives in a, in a nearby city so we came here she's okay now she's uh, recovering and she's getting better but yeah that's the reason why the setup changes i know it's not necessary for me to share all of this uh, personal information but i feel like i i kind of owe you a little bit of explanation for uh having so many changes of plans so uh, hopefully, hopefully we're going to be monitoring her uh, tonight and hopefully I'll be able to return to my hometown tomorrow and just keep things normal. So if that happens, then we will have our portfolio review uh, for Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. However, if I'm unable to do that due to um, uncontrolled circumstances, then I might have to postpone the uh, Saturday and Sunday videos probably to Monday and Tuesday. OK, so I'll let you guys know. I'll either post a message or post like a short video just to give you a little bit of an update. And I'm going to turn the video right now, the video off because it's super, super bad. I hate this video. It's my webcam and uh, it's really, really bad. However, I didn't want to like right now, as I mentioned, things are OK, so don't worry. Um, um, it's not like I'm I'm putting my family on the side and, and focusing on you guys. Of course not. I, I <laughs> Even though I love you guys i'll probably always put my family on the first place uh but now i do have enough time so i can record a small tutorial for you okay so today we're going to be doing a kitchen knife i'm going to continue the the modeling tutorial or tutorial uh, series from maya and we're going to be doing this chef's knives okay so i'm going to show you a couple of tricks here so we're inside of maya and i'm going to keep this super simple so if this is the first time you're using maya this should be fairly easy to follow along uh so yeah what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my front view or actually into my right view in this case. So I'm going to press the space bar, click on Maya and go into right view to go into my right view. And I'm going to go view, image plane, import image. Now, by default, you want to save your images inside of your source images. Right now, I have this project set up. By default, you're going to have like the default project. So just select the, the image that you place on your source images, which, by the way, for those of you that are unaware, should be on your documents, Maya, project projects sorry and here default that's usually when we are i'm using a different project right now so that's why you see other stuff in here uh but yeah that's the source image i'm gonna hit open now i'm gonna scale this up i don't want this knife to be super super small so i'm gonna go like something along these lines and uh, we're gonna do this in two parts uh or actually three parts we're gonna do the blade and part of the handle and then the handle and then those little like black uh elements over there which kind of like hold the blade and the handle together uh, and I'm going to be following a very, very simple uh, technique, which is I'm going to use a cube and I'm going to use box modeling, which is a super old, uh, I would say very, very uh, fundamental um, approach to the whole thing. So to, to modeling in general. So I'm going to start with a cube. I'm going to move the cube with WR to scale it up. And we're going to scale this until we have this base right here. There we go. So I'm going to grab all of my vertices, right click and grab vertices to go into vertex mode. W and I'm going to push this all the way to the front. And then with my R key, I'm going to make them really, really, really small to create the sort of uh, point, which is going to be right about there. There we go. Now, as you can see, we're still missing a lot of volume over here. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you one that I think it's a little bit fast. Uh, so I'm going to grab this tool right here, which is called the multi-cut tool. I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to drag one, press shift. I'm going to grab this guy, object mode, right click, object mode. And grab this guy, uh, cut tool. And then I'm going to go one, two. I'm pressing shift so that the line is completely straight. Four, five, six. There we go. Now it's a matter of going right click, vertice, grabbing this vertex and just moving it up. And then this guy and move it up. This guy, W, W is the movement tool here instead of Maya. And we just move this up. Grab this one and we move this up. This one and we move this up. There we go. Now we do the same thing for this guy over here. Again, this is just one way to do it. There's a lot of different ways. You know, in 3D, in the, in the 3D world, there's like 10 ways of doing something. And the best way is whichever gives whichever way gives you the fastest and cleanest result for you. So here, for instance, I'm going to grab all of these guys. And with R, I'm going to scale them down so they're in the exact same plane. And we get this very, very nice shape. 
Now on the uh, perspective view, which I access by hitting spacebar, click on Maya and going into perspective, I select this image plane, W, and I can move it to the side so that it's not messing with my uh, knife, and there we go. So now I'm just going to grab this guy, and with scale, I'm going to scale it down so that we have a proper, a proper thickness, which I think something like this is good. We're going to talk about the sharp edge in just a moment, uh, but for now we're going to leave it just like that. Now, I'm going to go back to right view, and we need to create the rest of the of the knife right here, which is the, the whole handle. So I'm going to grab this vertex, actually, these two guys, push them a little bit forward, there we go. And now, I want to grab this face right here, and I'm going to extrude it, Control e is the shortcut for extrude, and then with this blue arrow, I'm going to push it all the way to the back. Let's go back to right view, again, spacebar, click, and then right view to go into the right view, and they're going to go all the way over here. There we go. I'm going to press number four, which is my transparent mode. It's kind of like wireframe mode. It's actually called wireframe mode. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the for the knife. So I'm going to go into object mode for this guy. So let's go object mode. And then with my cut tool, I'm going to cut one, whoop, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to start using, again, my vertex mode. Right click on top of the object and select vertex mode. I'm going to start moving more vertices so that we match as close as possible the profile that we have for the blade, which is this one right here. There we go. Now, one of the things that you need to know about polymodeling is the more curved or complex a surface is, the more vertices you're going to need. So, for instance, in this area right here, if we really want to have like this very nice, like sharp lines over here, we're going to have to add a lot more vertices, okay? So this one, I'm actually going to move it forward to about there. And then this one's going to be like kind of my, my base. See that little like corner over there? So from here, on this face right here, we're going to have a lot of polygons. Not a lot, but quite a bit. So I'm going to do one, two, three, and four. Four polygons, which might seem like a lot, but it's the amount of polygons that we need. So I'm going to grab this guy, push it here, this guy, push it there, this guy push it there, and then this guy, and push it there. And as you can see, we're creating the curvature that we want to capture on our object. Now on the top here, one thing that we can do is we can actually like snap them again, like scale them, so they're like really, really flat against the, the surface of the knife, and that should give us a, a nicer effect. Now here's where the magic, or one, one of the magic things is going to happen. Uh, we can actually change, in this case, if I press number three, we can smooth everything out. See how we get these very nice, smooth shapes? That's close to what we want. It's not exactly what we want, but it's a little bit closer. So um, number three is the smooth mode inside of Maya. If you are a Blender user, this is very similar to the uh, subdivision modifier, which works in a very similar way. It's not permanent, so it's just a preview of how this thing's going to look once you smooth it. And uh, it will use a like traditional Catmod Clark um, uh, like subdivision method. Now, if I take a look at the reference, I'm going to see that this part right here, this one, and probably the handles when the uh, handle as well, might be a little bit thicker. Maybe not all of it, maybe just like this area right here. So I'm going to go to right view again, and let's try to match this thing right here. So I'm going to move this line right here, and I'm going to move this over here. Now, as you can see, we're not really catching the curvature here, so we might need to add, let's say, one and two polygons going across the knife, which is fine. Like adding more polygons, as long as we are justified in doing so, shouldn't be that much of a problem. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this faces over here. I'm just going to say one, two, three, four. I'm, I'm right clicking, going into face mode. One, two, three, four. Or quicker way to do this, let's go to right view. I'm just going to select all of these guys, and that's going to select all of the faces. However, it's going to select some of the faces down here, which we don't want. We pr can press control and deselect those elements. And I want to extrude this because, as you can see, this is kind of like an extrusion of the metal. And then the handle kind of like covers the, the other area. So I'm going to control E again to extrude this. I'm going to push this out like this. There we go. So now uh, we have probably a little bit less thick, probably about there. I think that's a, that's a good amount. And now uh, if we press number three, as you can see, we're going to ha have this sort of shape in here. I expect to have the uh, like the black handle pieces that are going to be present on this area. And uh, yeah, however, here's where we're going to start talking about one of the main things about uh, poly modeling, which are support edges. So this is a concept. It's a super, super common concept. Let me show you here. When you smooth something out, like, for instance, this cube right here, 
it will try to average out the distance between the vertices. That's what subdivision does. It kind of like softens out like the whole thing over here. However, if we were to add a support edge in a couple of areas like this, we're pretty much telling Maya, hey, try to hold this edge. Like the distance between these vertices are not is not as big. Therefore, the, the smoothness shouldn't be as big either. So if I press number three, you're gonna see that on this side it gets like very nice, like soft a corner, and on this side we still get like this very like so super soft effect. Okay. So in our case for our knife right now we uh, need to add that subdivision on top here okay so for if i do this you can see that this looks super super bad super wonky so i'm gonna grab my uh, cut tool and i'm gonna insert an edge loop right here you can press control to access this insert edge loop function from the from the knife tool so just hit control like i'm gonna have one there and one right here and now as you can see that's gonna be sharper look at that very nice very sharp however i also want like this top part of the blade to be sharp so i am gonna add one line going across this area right there and now if I do this, you're going to see that we get this very nice hard edge on the on the top of the element. And I'm also going to add one hard edge here and one hard edge here. So that when we create this sort of like a metallic part. Look at that. Look at how tight this looks now. Very cool, right? Like this looks like a like a machined part like it was made by a by like laser technology or something because we get these super super sharp edges on our on our knife form and then now we can talk about the actual blade of the knife which we know it's going to be on this side over here again there's a lot of different ways to do uh, edges i'm going to show you one and the one i'm going to show you actually needs us to insert an edge loop right here across the element so i'm going to grab this guy here the cut tool i'm going to press Control and shift so that it snaps to the center of the element right there and then I'm going to grab this outer edges on the sides, like this guys over here, all along our uh, blade, like all of this, like lateral guys, including this ones right here. And then with my R key, which is the scale button, I'm going to scale them in and then bring them up just a little bit. So we create that nice little line. See that? So we're creating that. So now when we press number three, as you're going to see, we're going to get that very nice sharp edge. And we can make that edge super, super, super sharp by doing a couple of things. First, if we were to grab that edge that we just created and we push it down a little bit more, W, so we're just going to push it a little bit more. And we add a couple of support edges, like right about here, like one right there and the other one over here. That's really, really going to hold an edge, as you can see right there. And now it should be able to see like a razor sharp edge right over there and a flat surface over here, which looks very nice. And we can help it by adding another support edge, like let's say about here, which is going to like make a division between the edge, as you can see there. And the element now this is going to be a little bit more prominent if we were to assign a shinier material so i'm going to right click the object and assign a new material and i'm going to use a blend and the blend material is this sort of like shiny material so you can see how the light especially here on the on the tip there how the light changes from like a flat surface to a sharp surface now you can see we lost a little bit of the sharpness here on this vertices so we definitely want to like fix those so i'm going to go here and i'm going to start pushing just moving just moving my vertices so that we create a nice sharp effect over here. So we're going to exaggerate this thing a little bit because I know when I press number three, this is going to get like sharper like that. And uh, and that's how I would create like a nice like pointy edge over there. Now you can see that pointy edge over there. It's a little bit smoother. So if we really, really want to smooth this thing out, we really are going to have to like move some of these elements. There we go. That's a little better. And that's it. With that, we, we can create this very nice effect. There's a little bit of a pinch there. I mean, again, we can solve it a little bit by like grabbing these vertices, just scaling them out a little bit so that the pinch is not as noticeable. We could also add a support edge right here on the corner or on the top, and that's going to hold the edge a little bit nicer. We might get a little bit of extra like like a point there. I think it's fine. I think this looks this looks good. Again, we can just clean that up by moving the vertices around a little bit more. But I think uh, for this exercises for this exercise, this should be uh, more than enough. Now, one thing that I can definitely see is that this thing has a little bit of curvature. It's not perfectly flat like we would have here. So to add a little bit of curvature, I'm going to grab this three faces right here, including the ones that we have as support edges. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. You can press sh uh, shift and then shift double click on this guy right here, oh, again, shift, there we go. As you can see, we get like that whole selection. 
And with my R key, I'm going to bring this out just a little bit. Because I know when I press number three, that's going to smooth it out and create this very nice, uh, like, curved effect on the, on the metal. And now for the, uh, like, black pieces over here, super easy way to do them. I'm going to grab all of these faces, the ones that we created before. Again, I'm doing a shift, click, and then double click where I want the selection to end. Click, double click where I want the selection to end. Click and double click. I'm pressing shift, remember, by the way. So it's shift click and then double click on where I want the selection twin, which is that one right there. And I'm going to say edit mesh and duplicate. And this will duplicate the faces. So now we have two objects, the original knife and the new faces over there. So those ones. I'm going to center the pivot point so it's easier to move. I'm just going to extrude them out. So extrude and bring this forward like this. Let's go to the right view. I'm going to grab this vertices right here, push them closer to where they're supposed to be. And then I'm going to grab like this guy right here and this guy right here and just give it a little bit of, uh, of curvature, right? Because we, we want our knife to be ergonomic. Now, if we press number three, of course, we're going to get a super ugly effect. So this is where, again, support edges come into play. So we're going to have one support edge there, one support edge there, one support edge here, and one support edge on the back, one support edge down here. And then we press number three. Look at that. Super clean effect. Let's number three this guy as well. And technically, this should be fitting like pretty, pretty nicely on the on the whole thing. And we're also we're even going to have like this, like sort of like space that we sometimes see in between like the metal and the, and the handle, which looks really, really nice. Uh, so, yeah. And now for this one, we did miss one little support edge down here. So on this like back area, there we go. And we get that. Look at that. It looks like this thing is now actually like form fitting to the whole thing. Now, to duplicate this guy to the other side so that we have the uh, both handles, super simple. You just grab the object, and you're going to go a mesh, mirror, and you're going to mirror this on the um, uh, object mode. Uh, sorry, world mode, X negative, because it's going to go across the X axis from X positive to X negative. We hit apply, and boom, there we go. We have our very, very nice handle um, solved. So this is usually how we see things, right? Now here's where I would probably like grab this guy, maybe make it a little bit bigger, like taller, just so that the metal is inside of this thing. And uh, yeah, look at that, super, super tight. Very cool, right? Now for those little uh, like extra elements, there, there's sort of like bolts that hold the whole thing together. I'm just gonna use a cylinder. I'm going to rotate this under 90 degrees here on the on the channel box. I'm going to make sure that this is perfectly symmetrical. And before I position it, I actually want to create like the bevel that it's going to have on the on the caps right here. So fraction, small fraction. That's a bevel. And let's do two segments. So when we press number three again, we get this very nice sharp effect. And uh, yeah, we're just going to go into the right view. Press number four. Position this where it's supposed to be, which should be about there. Make sure the size is correct. Control D to duplicate it. Position it where it's supposed to be, right there. Control D to duplicate. Position it where it's supposed to be. We grab all three of them. And since they're all in the center line, it should be fairly easy to just scale them in the Y axis until we see them across the knife, like that. And there we go. Now, let's say we want to go the extra mile. I'm not going to talk about render right now because I'm running a little bit of, out of time here. Uh, but I'm just going to grab like this handle thing. I'm going to assign a new material. Let's do a bleem. And on the properties, let's delete history so that this is clean. And on the properties, we're going to make this black. Like not super black, but just black like this. And then um, I'm going to leave the blade uh, like this metallic shine so that it looks uh, interesting. And there we go. We've created our, our knives, Chef, and this is a perfectly nice subdivision model that we can use. Now, a little bit of extra like pro tips. Once you're, once you're done with something like this, the best thing you can do is clean up your scene. And to clean your scene up, the easiest option is to um, uh, just delete the image plane, rename or grab everything that you uh, model, Delete history, freeze transformation, center pivot to make sure that everything is clean, that there's no extra information added, and just rename stuff. So I'm going to select everything, press Shift P so that everything's outside of any parent or grouping. This guy is going to be called Knife Blade. This guy is going to be called Knife Handle. And then these three things we can actually combine, and let's call them Knife, oh, knife Bolts. 
And that's it. We have our uh, final knife. I'm actually going to do something crazy here, guys. And just because I really, really uh, love you guys and I want to uh, show you something cool. So this is a little bit more advanced. This is not modeling. We're actually going to take this into Marmoset to create a very nice fast render. So let's say that this knife, I'm going to grab the whole thing, control G to group it. I'm actually going to duplicate this group, going to hide the first group with H because I, I don't want to mess up with the original knife. And then this one, let's kind of like have him like stuck on a, on a wooden board. So it's going to be like this. And let's create a nice wooden board. So I'm going to create a cube here. Scale it up a little bit. This is going to be like my, my cutting board. Let's bevel this, of course. Two segments and a small fraction. There we go. So this is going to be like my, my render. And all of this is going to be on top of a table like this. Okay. So now I'm, let's rename this. Let's call this table. And let's call this wood uh, block so i'm going to grab the group the wood block and the table i'm going to say file export selection and we're going to take this i'm just going to have it on my desktop for now it's called this knife and i'm going to open marmoset so for those of you that are not aware i know this is supposed to be a, a maya tutorial but i want to show you because marmoset I'm, I'm so in love with marmoset after doing the the beginner's course for marmoset which by the way is available on our on our uh links down here um check the description and you're going to be able to find it I, it's just such a quick render it's, a, it's such a nice way to get a quick nice results on on our um on our things so i'm just going to go file import model and we're going to import a knife and the cool thing about Marmoset is that we have a lot of material presets that we can use. First of all, I'm going to go here into the knife handle and I'm going to subdivide so that we get like the smooth, uh, like smooth section. I'm going to do the same for the knife blade. I'm just going to click subdivide and this is going to smooth it out. Pretty much as if we were hitting subdivision instead of Maya. This is a new thing instead of Marmoset 4. Very, very cool. And now here if we go into texture, there's actually a library of materials that we can use. So for instance, I'm going to go for the materials. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, where I'm recording, my internet's like really, really bad, so um, it, it might take a little while. So I'm going to grab like this marble old chipped. I like this one. So just double click. Uh, hopefully this doesn't take as long. And the cool thing is these materials are PBR materials, so physically based uh, render materials that are perfectly calibrated to work as uh, as intended. So let me pause the video real quick, guys. I'm going to download three materials. I'm going to download uh, a steel. I'm going to download a plastic. I'm going to download a wood and this marble, okay? Same deal. Just I just came here into the texture tab. Oh, actually, that's it's working now. So that was a little bit faster. So let's do it. Let's just I'm just going to drag and drop it here. And as you can see, now we have a marble uh, table, which, as you can see, has a very, very nice effect. So that looks good. Now let's look for a wood. And let's do... Mm, 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 which one will be a nice one? I think this, like teak varnish looks good so let's double click this one and while that thing is downloading i can actually go here remember the bling material that we used before this is the first bling that we created inside of maya we can modify it so that this looks like metal so i'm going to go here into metalness and i'm going to bring this all the way up and as you can see now my uh, knife is made out of metal pretty nice and if i bring the roughness down you're going to see that the that the knife is going to look a little bit like shinier like this okay so we have our wood material so we should be able to just grab this one, drag it onto the table. Look at that. Pretty cool. Cutting board. Um, and I can do the same thing for uh, like this blin. I'm just going to drag and drop it on the little dots right there. And for the blin 2, which was our original plastic, I can just like give it like a dark color. So like a dark reddish color. And let's increase the roughness. So it's a little bit matter. So a little bit more like a, like a matte material. And there we go. As you can see, we have a very nice scene here. Now let's go back into classic mode, uh, which is like our traditional like element here. And let's make this look like a kitchen. So I'm going to go into my sky and we can change the preset as well. I don't have a lot of presets here. I like this one. Let's do apartment Japanese. I think this one looks cool. Hopefully this doesn't take as long. And these are HDRs. They're high dynamic range images that capture uh, light information and, and pretty much fill our scene with light information so that we can get a nice little effect here. So I don't want to go like super in-depth about a marmoset on this video because I want to I keep it simple. I know I've said that before. I'm just going to click this light right here. and It's going to create a light that's coming from, from above, as you can see right there. And if I were to go into render and turn on ray tracing, now this is going to look, it's kind of like a magic thing. It's going to look really, really nice. I'm going to go to this skylight. I'm going to increase the diameter. That's going to make the shadows a little bit softer. And we can turn this around. 
and create like a like a nice composition like this one. Ooh, that looks cool. I'm gonna go to my sky and I'm gonna bring the background back background uh, brightness a little bit lower so we can focus on the on the knife itself. So just one one final trick. I'm gonna go to the camera here and I'm gonna turn on focus so that we can have depth of field and we can focus on just the. Uh, I know this is just like this is bragging. <laughs> I'm just going a little bit overboard, but look at this. Isn't this majestic? Now I can actually go here into the blend option. <coughs> this is something that, by the way, I think I don't mention in the in the what's the word in the Marmoset course. So if you're seeing this, you you're gonna have something cool here. I'm gonna go into the advanced metalness. So this is gonna be a metal effect, but it's gonna be uh, advanced, <laughs> of course. And no, it's not that one actually. Metalness was fine. So it's under reflection. We're gonna add anisotropic reflection. Anisotropic is that kind of thing that you get where um, the direction of the like the fibers of the element are gonna be going like in different uh, elements. Like yeah, there you go. So so the the reflection is gonna it's not gonna be perfectly like straight. You're gonna get like a little bit of a different reflection. This is kind of what you kind of have on on like old pants and stuff where with just the lines don't go in the exact same way. So we're gonna get a, a more interesting look. And that's it. So I know that this last bit was a little bit of an extra uh, thing. Uh, we do have a lot of tutorials about Arnold Renderer in our channel, so make sure to check those out. Uh, the Firefly, for instance, or the Grenade. So you could use those techniques to render this knife. If this is the first time modeling, then believe me, getting to this point, it's it's already a great, great accomplishment. Make sure to, yeah, give us a like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. And uh, I'll see you back on the next one. I'll let you know, guys, as, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, if we're going to be able to have our portfolio submission or we'll have short videos uh, during this weekend uh, i'll keep you guys updated thank you again and uh, for your patience and for your understanding and yeah that's it i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye